so thank you for joining the uh, the quarterly market insight q2 2021 webinar today um, as noted brett black ceo of english australia and svetlana cruz senior manager research manager for bonard uh, will pre present today's webinar for you um, so we'll jump into the webinar itself and presentation um, looking firstly at the um, our, our support, I would like to really acknowledge the Department of Education, Skills and Employment. Um, it's through their funding that we're able to undertake this survey and deliver these insights at a much more rapid pace than we've ever been able to do before. Um, but huge thanks to the department for their support in, in bringing this survey and the data to you. Um, Bonard, who are our research partners for the quarterly survey, as well as the annual and a number of dedicated research projects. Um, really can't thank them enough for their professionalism. And I know each of you that work with Bonard in the data collection would, would testify to that support as well. Um, Allianz Global Assistance have been our long-term partner in, in market intelligence delivery. And I thank them equally for their support over the series of, of events that we do with their um, specific and dedicated support. So we um, try to today run through a, a range of, of data pieces and obviously the main emphasis for today is to look at the um, Q2 2021 Alicost survey results. Um, naturally within these results we're able to look at the trend data uh, in all visa type, whether they're on student, non-student visa type, um, but equally um, some of the unique metrics which we've been able to build into this survey around offshore delivery, uh, blended, online, and, and different study modes. Um, equally looking at the student duration uh, by country and state, and then some uh, other additional insights around employee impact, um, which has been very important as part of the whole COVID experience. Um, and, and again, certainly really supports the way in which we can position the sector. But equally, it's, it's always good for us to benchmark against some of the, the more common um, public data. And so we'll kick off looking at the June 2021 um, student visa data alone. And so this data, um, some of you may have seen insights released from our market report. Uh, and for those that haven't, please do subscribe to the English Australia monthly market report. And each month we'll provide an overview of the, the Department of Education, Skills and Employment student visa data, um, as well as the most relevant student visa data. Um, and we'll show you that um, at the end of the presentation today. Um, obviously in terms of the impact of that the, the past 18 months has had, it's bearing much further down on our sector now in, into the first half of 2021. The early cost sector has been the most dramatically impacted um, in terms of the number of students uh, in the G June year to date period. And in fact, the commencement, decline in commencements is higher than any other sector, including the proportional decline um, from higher education that the actual raw number um, was actually over 7,000 more, 7,000 less students into early cost than there was from our, our next greatest decline across uh, any other sector in Australia. So in terms of the right hand on, um, we've, we've got our commencements um, and everyone across the sector knows that's our re renewal in terms of students coming in. New commencements down over 61% in that year to date period. And in fact, the, the, the month alone um, was down almost 70%. But I think what's really telling is if we consider here, we're benchmarking 2021 to 2020, uh, and that decline um, month on, sorry, year on year decline, which we're seeing uh, in 2020, we had 43,000 commencements and only 16,000 in 2021. If we actually went one year further, it's even far more starker. And it shows that we in 2019, we would have had 96,174 commencements as at this year to date period. 
So you know, if, if a normal year was benchmarked back into in 2019, there's roughly 80,000 less commencing students in the first half of 2021 than what we saw back in, in 2019. And the sector itself is, is just over 17% of what it was back in that benchmark year. In the enrolment picture, um, equally the, the uh, Ellicott's numbers down are over 60%, it's actually over 63% um, down on where we had the enrolment base uh, for uh, 2020 versus 2021 as well. Um, all, if you look at the aggregate across all sectors, um, all sectors commencements are down 29%, almost 30%. And as I mentioned, Ellicott's is over 60%, almost 62%. And in enrolments, all enrolments are down around 17%. And early cost enrolments down 63%. Um, you know, these are uh, very difficult times and, and the numbers bear true, um, certainly in, in the way in which we as English Australia position the needs for our sector, um, the data is, is uh, hard, to, hard to deny um, in terms of those declines that we've experienced. And we'll drill down a little bit more into the, the country and state data um, as well. So moving on, looking at that year-on-year year, um, picture. Um, we, we also don't just track where we're at. We, we try and look at what the proportional declines have been um, over those two year periods and um, so over, over the, the year periods. And as I mentioned, if you look back, the aggregate of you know, the 2019 um, experience versus where we are today, um, you know, super um, extensive declines. And if you look at the month on month, um, June was actually the lowest raw numbers. Um, you know, historically, it, it's been for, yeah, I think, um, you know, tracking well back over the last 10 years until we would have seen numbers as low as what we've seen in June 2021 with only 3,290 new commencing students over that period. We know there are some students that may be studying online that aren't captured uh, in the uh, student visa data, but again, a, a relatively small proportion in, in the overall decline. Um, moving on, and, and again, this is the student visa only data, um, the DESI published student visa data. Um, across the different markets, the, the impact, as you can see, it's negative across the board, but we have our big markets in Latin America have had the greatest level of decline, um, even though in terms of the, the impact we'd normally see out of China um, being you know, the, the largest market and the proportional decline out of China here was 52%. Um, the actual number of, of um, the raw number of students in terms of the decline out of Colombia was actually bigger in this last period. And there was something around 4,600 students less out of Colombia and about 4,300 students less out of, of China over that uh, same proportional period. So again, um, you know, when, when we relay that into our states, um, states that had a, a bigger exposure, um, particularly out of you know, China, Colombia and Brazil naturally would have had the, the greatest declines, but now it's centered a lot more on uh, the South American markets and, and you know, the, the significant declines, both in terms of percentage, but also the raw numbers for those markets. Um, I'll pick up potentially some of the state-based data, um, some of the countries in, in the state-based data. Um, we have seen you know, across the board, again, you know, looking at the, the, the biggest states, um, particularly Queensland uh, and New South Wales and Victoria, um, most exposed to the, the countries with the highest volume of students in the top 10. Um, New South Wales, almost 11,000 students um, in, in terms of the decline year on year, um, year to date. Um, of that, there was a, a decline of around 66% out of Colombia, and we saw the size of that, the market. Uh, and remembering pre-pandemic, um, China was still number one, Colombia was then in number two, and, and Brazil in, in number three overall. 
Um, down in Victoria, uh, significant declines out of India, um, down around 67% uh, of that in, in the market itself as well. Um, over 500 students less uh, from India, which was typically the top six country um, coming in nationally as well. Queensland um, somewhat is less um, evident in terms of the decline now in Queensland because historically the proportion of students uh, which were studying on visitor and um, working holiday visa was much higher in Queensland than non-student visa proportion. But to see that level 65% decline in student visa alone, it really doubles the impact um, that we've seen, uh, particularly on Queensland and you know, the, the real impact on um, providers up in Queensland. Brazil down almost 73% in, in terms of the, the proportional decline, um, around 1,200 less students alone out of Brazil in Queensland. WA and South Australia were most impacted by China um, and it was around 52% decline just in China, nearly 53% nearly decline in uh, China for WA and um, almost about 47% down in, uh, from China in South Australia. Um, I'll move on. I know with, with interest of time, we want to get into the, the survey itself. And um, this initiative was launched last year, again, acknowledging the, the strong support from the Department of Education, Skills and Employment to enable us to provide timely data. Um, you, as we're tracking now, uh, historically, we would be presenting in the middle of the year on what the past year's performance are, is or was, and now we're presenting almost uh, on the quarter um, uh, after to, to tell you what the experience of all student visa types was. So uh, really in, incredible insights. Um, I've mentioned what we'll capture within the report and some of the new features um, that are here too. So I'm going to hand over now to Svetlana to present the findings from the Q2 2021 um, Ellicos Market Insight Report. Thanks, Svetlana. Thank Thank you, Brett, um, for the kind introduction. And um, so going straight to the Q2 data itself. So um, what I have here is the number of responding colleges for this quarter, Q2 2021. And of course, um, again, I would like to thank the 95 colleges who provided their support for this quarter. Um, it has been a difficult period. So this is um, your support is, of course, always greatly appreciated. Um, during this time. So the Q2 2021 data is based on historical comparison, based on a sample of 91 colleges which provided data for both Q2 2021 and Q2 2020. And um, among these um, 15 providers who participated uh, reported no enrollments for the second quarter of 2021, and six of them are in hibernation. So looking at the responding colleges, nine, uh, New South Wales remain to have a strong representation for Q2 2021, while Queensland had a higher response rate in Q2 2021 with 29 responding colleges from 26 in Q1 2021. Uh, Victoria had 18 responding colleges, followed by Western Australia with uh, 11. And seven from South Australia. With the provider type um, respondents for Q2 2021, University Base had the most representation um, with 31 colleges, followed shortly by standalone colleges with uh, 13 respondents. Vocation and higher education, uh, vocation education training schools uh, had a higher response for the Q2 2021. So from 17 in Q1, uh, we had 20 now for the second quarter of uh, for the year. Multi-sector goes with um, six respondents and with school as well, and then private higher education with uh, two respondents. So for Q2 2021, the market continued to decline, um, obviously, and compared to, uh, to Q2 2020. So based on a sample of 91 colleges, which provided data for both quarters, 
ELECO student numbers fell by 53%. So from 7,941 students in Q2 2021, it is now 3,716. Um, while South we, uh, uh, student weeks um, declined by 57% over the same period. So from Q2 2020, it was 92,019 student weeks, and it was down to 40,063 in um, Q2 2021. Moving on um, in terms of a visa breakdown in the second quarter, so student visa increased its share for this uh, quarter with 77% of the student market share, while student weeks had, had a higher market share of 82%. Um, the other visa type holds the second largest share as it includes um, the offshore students with no visa or those with uh, pending visa application. So now it is a 20% for, for the second quarter. Um, in terms of booking source in uh, Q2 2021, the commissionable, bo uh, commissionable bookings remain the preferred channel by students so with 86% and 14% of students opt for uh, direct bookings in Q2 2021. For students by instruction method, so most students in Q2 um, continued to study their courses fully online with 57%, while 35% studied face-to-face -face classes. And, and the remaining 8% experienced uh, a mix of both delivery modes through uh, the blended learning um, delivery. So looking at the students by study location based on the 75 providers who were able to break down their student study location for the second quarter, 39% of the student population are still interested to study English online. So it's a, uh, a total of 1,257 and compared to um, the 1,964 students who are reported to be studying offshore in Q2 2021. Um, what, so what we have here looking at the trend development on a core sample. So this is what Brett mentioned regarding um, how important the, the quarterly data is when how we pitch different kinds of samples, different perspectives. So these numbers show here are based on the 72 providers that participated throughout all quarters. So this is a like-to-like -like comparison of the same cohort of providers that shows um, um, the overall decrease for Q2 2021 from Q2 2020 of 57% in student numbers. So a while ago, I reported that the second quarter experienced a 53% decline. But if we look at a core sample, um, it actually experienced a much um, a higher decline of 57%. And if we look back at the 2018 data, so it is actually down to 80% from Q2 2029, uh, 2019 from um, the 75, uh, 72 providers who provided their data throughout Q2 2019 and Q2 2021. So it's 80% from Q2 2019, um, comparing it here now in 2021. And to provide you another perspective of the performance of the sector. So in terms of June year to date uh, data, this slide shows the figure of aggregated data based on 74 providers that participated both in Q1 uh, 2021 and Q2 2021. So when looking at the trend development again on a core sample since the start of the year 2021, the Elecos sector experienced a 66% decline. So um, if we compare this with the that's the data that Brett provided earlier, um, this number shows a higher decrease um, and, and this is because, as noted, um, this is capture um, all students under all visa type. Moving on to the state overview here, um, we can see here that the biggest decline was noted in New South Wales, 
with 1,307 students, or it enrolled uh, 1,656 fewer ELECO students for the second quarter of 2021. And percentage-wise, the most affected state in the second quarter is um, Victoria, uh, Queensland, with a decline of 67.5% in Q2 2021. Victoria, on the other hand, experienced a 48% decline, or 547 less students. And um, Western Australia here experienced 43% decline. And with the smallest decline is um, South Australia of 30% or 121 less students. For student weeks, uh, it saw similar development with uh, New South Wales experiencing the largest drop in absolute terms. So it experienced um, 18,190 less uh, student weeks for the second quarter of the year while Queensland um, saw the steepest decline in terms of percentage change with 71.5%. Um, Other states fared better with Victoria student weeks down by 55.7%, uh, Western Australia with um, a drop of 45%, uh, and South Australia by 44.4%. Uh, 44 uh, as an additional feature we added at the start of this year, so we added the uh, average weekly tuition fee uh, question um, in order to provide this um, insight on how much the average weekly tuition fee offered by colleges based on their course deliveries. So of the 66 providers that uh, report their data for this quarter, 49 of them charge the same tuition fee for onshore and offshore course delivery um, in Q2 2021. Uh, the remaining 17 colleges charge different fees for each system. And looking at here, the biggest variation is um, with onshore and offshore fees was identified by New South Wales. The average weekly tuition fee charged by responding providers in the state for offshore delivery was 27% uh, or $88 higher than the price of an offshore course. And going straight to the state performances with uh, New South Wales first. So New South Wales here, um, um, the top source countries for the state remain the same with the exception of India in Q2 2021 compared to Q2 2020. So here China remains to be the top source market for the state composing of 568 students in Q2 2021. Um, we can see here the Asian source markets for New South Wales had better performances in Q2 2021 compared to the countries from the Americas um, mainly because of um, lower student visa uh, students under student visa holders. So looking at Colombia here, it experienced a 70% drop in uh, student numbers from 299. So it's, it is now down to 90. And with Brazil, with a decline of 80%, so from 365 students to 74 students in Q2 2021. As for Queensland, the state's top two source markets are from the Americas region with uh, 11 student, 111 students from Colombia and 94 students from Brazil. Uh, most of Queensland's uh, top source markets experienced more than 60% decline with the exception of Taiwan and Italy. So this actually reflects the overall performance of the state, uh, which I mentioned a while ago, um, looking at the top 10 source countries uh, year over year performances. South Australia, on the other hand, has a diverse top 10 source markets. However, its student market share heavily relies on China, as we can see here as a top source country. So it's um, China in Q2 2020 recorded 208 students and uh, it almost uh, maintained a stable source of uh, students from the country with 190 students in Q2 2021. So looking closely with um, the type of visa 
these Chinese students are holding. So 60% 60, 60 of 190 students are actually holding other visa type um, for this state. As for Victoria's tops and source markets, um, its source markets performances varied in Q2 2021. So some experience a drop of more than 80%, such as uh, Thailand here and Colombia, while others had a decline of less than 20%, with uh, Japan here with a decline of 17%, and India here with 19%. The state also experienced um, some increases, although um, a bit small with nine students in uh, with South Korea here. So from Q2 2020, it, it had uh, 21 students and it's now up to 30 students in Q2 2021. China dominates the student market share in Victoria with 354 students. And looking at these Chinese students, 76% uh, of these are actually under student uh, visa. And lastly, for Western Australia's um, performance, so uh, its top 10 source markets, uh, the Asian countries performed better compared to the Americas. So most of the Asian countries uh, experienced less than 40% decline except for Vietnam here. South Korea and Hong Kong um, experience increases, um, albeit a smaller one, but nonetheless, um, despite America's uh, region performances, Colombia remains to be the top, uh, top source country for Western Australia in Q2 2021. China follows uh, with 127 students. So it was 185 students in Q2 2020, and it is 127 in Q2 2021. And um, Brazil comes in third position with um, 105 students in Q2 2021. Moving on to the provider type analysis, um, and with a standalone Elicos uh, College, only um, this provider type experienced the largest decrease in terms of absolute numbers. So it recorded um, 2,167 less students in Q2 2021, or a decline of 64%. So from 3,369, it is now down to 1,202 for the second quarter of 2021. Its student weeks, on the other hand, recorded a uh, higher decline of 71% or 9,672 weeks from 33,555 student weeks in Q2 2020. It's a uh, top 10 source market. So for standalone colleges um, has a um, varying regions. It's, it, and China from third position in Q2 2020 rose as the top source country for the second quarter of 2021. And this is due to the year over year drop in student numbers from Colombia. So Colombia was 637 in Q2 2020, it is now down to 218 in Q2 2021. And with Brazil with um, a decrease of six, uh, 77% for the second quarter. 78% uh, of the Chinese students in standalone Alecos colleges are, um, I mean, looking at the visa type, are student visa holders. And for the university-based colleges, so this is um, the least affected among provider types. It experienced a 35% decrease in student numbers, or 741 less students uh, in turn, um, for Q2 2021. And in terms of student weeks, it experienced a slightly higher um, performance with um, 40% uh, decline. And uh, similarly to Q1 2021, the university based data for the second quarter of the year is um, thanks to the enrollment of offshore students. And this, from these 1,370 students, 62% of them um, are actually 
offshore students um, for, for the second quarter of 2021. For its top source countries, so top 10 source countries, the chart here shows that uh, university-based colleges heavily relies on China. So um, it has 1,466 in Q2 2020, and it is now, um, it, it is down with 947, but still um, China dominates the university-based uh, colleges when it comes to student market share. So this provider type also had the most enrollments from this country with 74% of Chinese students in Q2 2021 were enrolled in university-based colleges. Japan here, looking at Japan, so Japan has been um, experiencing significantly drops for the past quarters, but here we can see here that it experienced a slight increase of 38%. And looking at these uh, 62 students, 63% of these uh, Japanese students are enrolled under other visa type. Other increases um, for university-based colleges were experienced by um, from India, South Korea, and uh, Colombia. For vocational and education training schools, so in terms of absolute numbers, uh, VAT schools were the second most affected in Q2 2021. So from 1,923 students, it is now down to 911 students. It's student weeks experience a higher decrease of almost uh, 60%. So from 25,505 stu student weeks, it is now down to 10,436. For the second quarter of the year, so we can see here that um, vocational and educational training school um, uh, relies still on the America's market. So it, it's, it is an important market for this provider type. And um, despite the decreases from Colombia and uh, Brazil, it still remains, both of these countries still remains its top two source countries um, for Q2 2021. And in terms of year-over-year uh, -year performance, uh, Taiwan and Japan fared better with 8% uh, and 10% decreases uh, respectively. So moving on to the other provider types, so I'm going to briefly go through it with uh, multi-sector schools and private higher education. So with um, multi-sector, it's uh, student numbers experienced less than 120 students. So it is down to 38% for Q2 2021. And it experienced a lower decrease um, for its um, a lower decrease of 15% for its student weeks. As for uh, school-based providers um, from 55 students in Q2 2020, it is now down to 12 students in Q2 2021, while its student weeks um, experience a 73% decline for Q2 2021. And lastly, for private higher education, so uh, what we have here is um, it, it experienced 142 less students for the second quarter of 2021 and with um, its student weeks with a drop of 85%. So moving on now to the impact of COVID-19 on employees. So um, we started gathering recording this data since Q4 2020 last year and of course I again I would like to thank the responding colleges who were able to uh, provide their data for this um, section so what we have here is uh, the results based on a sample of 54 colleges who were able to provide the current status of their employees during the Q2 2021 so um, this is for the second quarter of 2021, so from June, um, April to June of this year. 
So the survey results shows that 33% of Adeco's employees were working full-time in Q2 2021, while 18% were employed on a part-time basis. So during this period as well, 49% um, of Alicos College staff were on uh, a seasonal contract. So majority of the Alicos employees are holding, um, are actually seasonal uh, workers, employees. So overall, 45% of Alicos staff continued to work under their usual working arrangements during the second quarter of the year. Uh, at the same time, 27% of Alicos employees um, of the responding colleges, of 54 responding colleges, uh, reported to have lost their job in Q2 2021. And of these, more than two thirds, or 55, um, uh, more than two, more than two thirds were seasonal workers. So, uh, overall, the total employees that were affected by COVID nineteen during the second quarter of twenty twenty one has a total of uh, fifty five point five percent. And um, going back to Brett, so I will be. Um, um, transitioning to um, back to you, Brett, with the June 2021 student visa commencement data. Thank you very much, Svetlana. Uh, once again, a very comprehensive overview of the data and, um, and colleges will be aware uh, participants will receive the report um, after the webinar today. And equally, we, um, we share with you the pivot table to, to allow you to do any of your own um, analysis and, and bespoke reporting, but um, to have the insights from Svetlana um, to just dissect some of those really key and pivotal elements and um, takeouts of, of the report, it's really valuable. So thank you for picking up um, that across the board. Um, the employee impact, again, it, it's stark. Um, and, you know, it, it's really something that troubles us all. Um, to see again you know, a quarter of staff across the sector uh, in in that one period um, to to have lost their jobs is it's really um, saddening and and something that um, you know, we, we hope won't be a long term loss for all of that skills and talent that they uh, possess. Um, I'm going to conclude the presentation today just to give a, a little picture on where things are tracking with student visa data. Um, Part of English Australia's lobbying and advocacy is also around what's happening with student visas. Um, we're aware there's been some trends in terms of student visa um, grants and, and the success of student visa grants. Again, encourage providers to, to contact us if you're seeing any changes in market that um, you'd like to be followed up with the Department of Home Affairs. We've also noted that um, as September uh, the revision to the September um, SSVF reporting, um, there has been some colleges who have now had less than 50 visas um, transition from level one to level two uh, in terms of their SSV evidence rating. Um, this is a fact we've taken up with the Department of Home Affairs and, and we'll try and um, see if we can get a resolution for those providers which um, have been impacted for causes certainly outside of their own um, course. Now, in terms of the, the, the data itself, um, again, we will add um, a little bit of context to, to what's happening across the whole grants um, framework. So in terms of all grants, um, total visa grants for sector year to date, um, grants fell by around 26,000 uh, June year to date, 2021. And that's around 20, almost 22% down compared to the year 2020. Um, albeit the rate of decline um, was a little bit better in, in the last couple of months than what we'd seen um, prior. So I guess indicative hopefully of things within home affairs starting to, turning, uh, to turn and more visas being reviewed and granted. Um, but if you do consider where we are now, again, um, back to our sort of benchmark year, um, who knows when we'll be back to that benchmark year, but of 2019, 
Uh, the visa grants, uh, even at year to date June, it's down 49%. Uh, so about half the market of grants coming through in terms of the pipeline. Um, and that's all sectors. Um, if we move on and look at the independent alley cost sector alone, um, independent alley cost sector fell far more um, significantly than that whole grant uh, picture. And so for independent alley cost, the actual decline was 84.6%, so almost 85%. Um, and that equated to 9,300 odd less visas um, being granted within that um, past year to date June period. Um, most uh, highest impact was our offshore grants uh, and notably the offshore grants down is actually over 95% um, from where we were um, this time last year. And so that's around almost 6,800 fewer um, grants year to date as well. Um, in particular, specifically in the independent alley cost sector. And we know with grants, um, if a, a student applies on a package, then that grant could actually be um, secured or, or recorded, I should say, in the, um, the, the primary sector, which may be higher education or vocational education, um, if they're doing alley cost on pathway. But um, onshore grants down almost 65%, but that big loss in offshore, which we know uh, is really the lifeblood for the new students coming through. Um, it, it, it's a really dramatic decline. Um, looking at lodgements, so if we take a, a separate look at the alley cost lodgement picture, essentially our lodgements are down uh, over 80%, almost 82%. And again, it's um, close to 10,000 less lodgements. Um, I know speaking to our providers and, and agents, there is at the moment, some hesitation in, in students lodging their visas um, until we have greater certainty around the border reopening. Um, certainly, we are trying to, to get a, a more positive message out to the market around uh, Australia being ready um, and, and certainly wanting students to come back um, as soon as it's possible to do so. And um, something we're very conscious of is, is that lag in, in the lodgement which could result in, in students then um, selecting to go to other countries, uh, a risk factor in terms of, again, the recovery that what we're pushing very hard to see. Um, looking at it, uh, not just on a yearly basis, but if I move on and have a look on monthly trends, you'll see that the second quarter here in, in 2021 actually reversed some of the gains that we'd sort of seen, although minimally um, in Q1. Um, and we had the first quarter lodgements had actually saw some slight increases, um, which have been, again, um, I guess that those small wins lost in, in the second half. Um, yeah, so they bounced back a little bit up to April and then in May, but again, slightly declined again in June down to just 161 lodgements um, in that um, June period. And finally, um, if I look at the independent alley costs uh, across the various state levels, um, New South Wales ha has to date seen the greatest decline in lodgements um, in terms of where we sit year to date June, uh, around 3,000, nearly 3,900 less lodgements in, in year to date 2020. Um, Queensland uh, has also seen a very severe decline. And, and the numbers are uh, nearly 3,100 um, student, fewer lodgements um, into Queensland as well. So again, it's around about 83% down, um, whereas New South Wales was almost 82% down. Um, other states, they're proportionally similar declines. Um, Victoria is down around 83% or uh, almost 2,000 lodgements. WA uh, down 74, nearly 75% and uh, SA down around 88% um, of overall lodgements you know, as that June. Again, uh, you know, reinforcing what I was saying, we, we understand there are those triggers uh, in terms of students holding back on lodgements until um, th there's some greater certainty. Um, we also need some more positive messaging around Australia and, and something that um, 
we are we are certainly working with from English Australia and across all of these um, different points of data which we've presented today, um, be it on on the year to date June, um, the the fact of the whole student picture, um, the the across visas, student visas and non student visas, and employee impact um, coupled with visa data gives a wealth of information for us to really position what the needs of the early cost sector are. Um, and just moving on, I, you know, before we, we finish today, we'd like to give a quick note of recognition to our partner, Allianz, who I referenced up front, um, our, our supporter for this series, uh, have great digital solutions for students that um, need remote support and access and a whole lot of uh, wellbeing tools as well. Um, just to provide a little bit of an overview of those now, you can see there's digital solutions across their apps and other telehealth technologies. And again, they've got a, a great customer service team across Australia to, to provide you with support. Um, here is a, a quick link to, to some of their contacts or please contact us at English Australia. We're happy to, to provide some uh, networks through to, to your local state representative. Uh, again, just before we go, I'd like to thank the Department of Education, Skills and Employment for the survey, but more than anyone, thank all of the providers and participants who contributed to this survey, uh, many who have contributed to each one of the surveys now since they've commenced, uh, really valuable and we greatly appreciate um, all of those insights. Um, we have had uh, the some initial comments in the chat. Um, if there's any quick uh, last comments you'd like to make, we've got a couple of minutes here right now. Um, we haven't traditionally done a chat, and so if there's something you would like us to, to uh, respond to within the next few minutes, um, particularly through Svetlana's knowledge on the, uh, the survey results or, or mine, happy to pick those up. So I'll just give a minute if there's anything that someone would like to the chat. Should have given a, a little bit of a, a heads up to do that in, in advance. And if not, please um, don't hesitate to, to contact us around the, um, the opportunity to uh, talk through any of the results. Uh, as we mentioned, we will distribute the, the full report. Um, great question, Helen, around when the borders may reopen. Uh, I think we're all at the moment focused on the national plan to transition um, that the federal government released um, last month, mid last month. And, Within that, the particular vaccination levels um, that uh, you know, show when our borders will reopen. Uh, the phases, what was encouraging was to see in each of the phase A, B, and C, um, which you know, obviously when we get to phase D, uh, which is at the 80% uh, national vaccination rate, the plan is for borders to be reopened. Uh, but in along that transition uh, from the 70% mark through, each phase did include and, and prescriptively outlined student cohorts and, and again, encouraging to see that. Um, to next question, yes. So employee impact uh, in that we've presented today was specifically for the, that um, one quarter period. So Q2 2021 compared to Q2 2020. Um, uh, why the Brazilians and the Colombians do not choose New South Wales as much as the other states. In fact, it was interesting that the Brazilians and the Colombians were um, preferencing the Eastern states more. And in fact, coming into 2020, it was the, um, we were starting to see after that in those first three months of 2020, students starting to move in, in out further uh, across into Western Australia, um, greater numbers into South Australia and ACT. From what had traditionally been, um, we, we'd seen Brazilian students centred largely on um, New South Wales, Colombian students down in Victoria, and both demographics of Brazil and Colombia uh, in Queensland. And they were starting to, to move out further. Uh, the unfortunate impact now is just because of the, the, the number of students that um, the rate of decline means those impacts are greater on, on the states. Um, uh, so what's this? Uh, possibly a student health insurance. 
But student health and insurance, I think, is, is going to be a, just a, a mandatory requirement for all of our, our visas, as has been for uh, you know, many, many years now. Um, you know, there, there is comparable programs in place for other countries and destinations. Australia offers a really great um, base level of coverage out of our, our overseas student health cover, equivalent to obviously the domestic Medicare system. So, you know, one of the things I think when we consider even moving forward um, health and safety of students, then the, these aspects of, of health cover are going to be important. And just to note, you know, students here in Australia are, are eligible for the vaccination program and, and we're you know, encouraging um, where they can uh, for students to um, get access to the vaccination as well. Um, it, it's, it's part of their, their, their coverage um, whilst here in Australia. Colleagues, that seems to be most of the questions we've had today. Uh, we're almost uh, at the end of the allocated time. Um, once again, thank you to Bonnard and uh, Svetlana for all of your work and the team in the data collection and reporting. And thanks to all of the, the colleagues who have attended today and support English Australia in, in our endeavours. So um, to everyone, take care, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you again at the next presentation. Thank you and bye for now.